Picture this, you're ready to go back to school to finish your degree, but there is that one math or science course that is freaking you out and making you rethink everything. Sound familiar? You are not alone, and I can help. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Kelly, and I study how students learn math and science to create classroom environments to set students, like you, up for success. One of the strongest predictors of success for college learners is academic self-concept, our internal perception of our own academic abilities. I have five strategies to help you improve your academic self-concept so that you can start your math and science courses worry-free. Let's dive in. When we see experts in any discipline, we often forget that they too were once novice learners. We've all had experiences where we see someone successfully completing something that we are having a hard time with. It can be easy to accidentally start judging ourselves. Without realizing it, we start to decrease our academic self-concept. So what can you do? Remind yourself that we all start from the beginning when we are learning something new. It is normal and expected to not be an expert on your first attempt. Talking to the people around you can really help get things in perspective. If you see your peers succeeding where you're struggling, ask them about some of their first experiences in the discipline. Examine your experiences. We always hear that failures are a great opportunity for learning, but sometimes we forget to reflect about them so that we can actually realize those learnings. If you have struggled in math or science before, have you thought about why? If you notice yourself engaging in overwhelmingly negative self-talk about these experiences, try to reframe the context. Take stock of the challenges that you've overcome in your life. Write them down, along with the lessons you've learned overcoming them. You may find that you've already overcome the challenges you face in class in a different context. Take feedback in stride. Feedback comes in many forms. It might be written comments, a grade, verbal statements, or even the dreaded red slash through some work. Think about some feedback you have received in math and science. What did it sound like? How did it make you feel? And how did you use the feedback? Some people are incredibly skilled at providing feedback to others so that it's uplifting and motivating. Unfortunately, many people are not as skilled. As a result, if we receive constant feedback about a particular topic, it can negatively impact how we feel about our ability to engage with certain disciplines. So what can you do? Next time you get feedback, remind yourself that it is not a reflection of your self-worth. We all need help when learning new things. Feedback is just a way to give you clues about how to be successful moving forward. While reviewing feedback, write down two things. First, what it means, and second, something you will do because of it. Celebrate your success. When you use numbers in the real world, have you ever stopped to think about how you did so successfully? Try to intentionally realize when you use numbers doing your normal daily things. Celebrate yourself for being successful in these moments. By intentionally taking the time to recognize and reflect on these situations, you give yourself the opportunity to experience mastery over and over again, which adds up over time. Ask yourself why what you're studying is important. We've all been told before various reasons why math and science are important in the real world. But have you stopped to think about why you value the topics? Maybe you have some complex desire to understand and explain phenomena within the natural world. However, value doesn't have to be that holistic and complicated. Maybe you need to learn a specific skill, like how to run a statistical test. Or maybe you just need to pass the class so that you can move on to other things. Maybe you want to learn how to help your child with homework. Each of these scenarios describes different sorts of values someone might have related to math and science. Take some time to reflect about how you value math and science. Don't feel bad about it. Just write it down so that you know. When you're struggling with something, ask yourself, why am I learning this? What will this help me achieve? And when you get frustrated or hit a challenge, remind yourself your answers to these questions so that you know why the struggle of learning new things is worth it. Okay, I hope you're feeling a little less worried about math and science. Remember, the way you think about yourself matters. How you compare yourself to others 
perceive your past successes and failures, internalize feedback, experience mastery, and determine the value of knowledge all help impact your internal perception of yourself as a math and science learner. If you take the time to reflect about your thinking to improve your academic self-concept in math and science, you can single-handedly set yourself up for greater success. And hey, maybe you will even enjoy your math and science journey in the process.